بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليمًا مزيدًا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أيها المسلمون عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بالتقوى الله فإن خير الزاد التقوى In today's khutbah Inshallah ta'ala, I was not sure what I was going to talk about. Especially because we're on the doors of Ramadan. But the fact is that I'm here in Doha, and this is the first khutbah that I've ever given in Qatar. And Allahu alam, maybe it'll be the last. We never know what the dunya has in store for us. So I focused on something that I found would be beneficial, first of all, for myself and for my brothers inshallah ta'ala and when I started to reflect on what would be beneficial obviously hundreds of ideas came to my mind but when I started to look into Surah Al-Fatiha and I had given before lectures and khutbas about ihdina to guide us about guidance and hidayah in Islam I looked at the second part of the ayah Ihdina to what? To the Surat Al-Mustaqeem. And I decided, inshallah, to make today's khutbah about the Surat Al-Mustaqeem. And I asked myself, if we were to go to the Muslims today and to ask them, what is the Surat Al-Mustaqeem? This straight path that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to 17 times, a minimum in a day of 17 times. Would most Muslims know what it was? And I said to myself, I don't think they would. They would say it's a straight path. Say, what is a straight path? How do we know that we're on the straight path? Are we on the correct path? Are we on the wrong path? So what is the Sirat al-Mustaqeem? The Sirat al-Mustaqeem is the path that is clear, that leads to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Ibn Kathir rahimahullah said in his tafsir, that even though the scholars of tafsir, the mufassireen, that they, their ibarat, their, their statements about what is the sirat al-mustaqim, they're so different and so many. He said, but all of them go back to one meaning. And that is to follow the Quran and to follow the sunnah. So following the Quran and the sunnah means being on the sirat al-mustaqim. Here, someone might ask a question. How do we know that Phil and everybody says they're following the Quran and the Sunnah? So what? How do we know the difference? We say Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us by saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made it very clear that this is my path, the straight one. So follow it and do not follow the other paths, because verily will make you go astray on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as it came in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, 
when he, he mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was with his companions radiallahu anhum that he drew a straight line on the ground he drew them a straight line and on the side of this line he drew a whole bunch of small lines on them next to them and he said the sabil Allah the one in the middle this is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on the side of it all of these small lines they are the path, they are the line, or the path of at the, at the end of each path, there's a shaitan calling to it. And then he read the verse that I just read, مستقيمًا, to the end of the verse, alayhi salatu was salam. So now we know that there's going to be many paths. And the only correct path to be the straight path, the correct sirat al mustaqim, is the one in the middle. Some people might say, it's still unclear. How do we know which one is which? Because everyone's still saying the Quran and Sunnah. We say, Alhamdulillah, that our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not leave us in the dark. He continued in another hadith to show us that his ummah would, they would deviate and break up into different sects, 73 sects. And he said, all of them are in the hellfire except for one. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they were curious, what is this one? They will not be in the hellfire. So he said, ما كان عليه ما كان أنا عليه اليوم وأصحابي What I am upon today and my companions. So now we see and we learn that the Sirat al-Mustaqim it's basically built on three pillars. Following the Quran and following the Sunnah on the understanding of the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم. And the Sahaba, when we talk about the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم we see that they are the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised in the Qur'an. Praising them that He is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. And they are the ones that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, they are the best of generations. The best of generations is His companions, radiallahu anhum, as He said. And they are the ones who witnessed the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the ayat came down to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they are the ones who learned the sunnah from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then strove to teach it to the ummah to spread it throughout the earth. These are the three pillars that you know if you are following them and you are clinging to them, then inshallah you are on the straight path. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that I am leaving with you Something that if you hold tight to it, then you will never go astray after me. Kitab Allah wa sunnati. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my sunnah. And he said in another hadith, the hadith of Al-Irbad radiallahu an, <coughs> when he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them a sermon and they said that it filled their hearts with fears and the tears started to run in their eyes. And they felt that it was a farewell sermon. So they said to him, O oh, Sina, to give us advice. What to advise us with? So he started to advise them, alayhi salatu was salam, with different things. And then he said, Wa alaykum bis sunnati, wa sunnat al khulafa al rashidina min ba'di, abdu alayha bin nawajith, wa iyyakum wa muhdathat al umur, fa inna kula muhdathatin bid'a, wa kula bid'atin dalala, wa kula dalalatin fin nar. In this hadith, they asked the Prophet to give them advice. So he started with different pieces of advice. But the majority of the hadith was taken from the end part where he said, وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسُنَّةِ It's upon you to follow my sunnah. And the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashideen, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum. And the manhaj of the Sahaba, the methodology of the Sahaba who were with them. He ordered us to follow his sunnah and to follow the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And he told us, in the hadith, Abdu alayha bin nawajid, to, to cling to it, even if, if, even if it's with your teeth. He's showing the emphasis, alayhi salatu wasalam, the importance of holding on to the sunnah. Even if it's with your teeth, you hold on to it. And then he warned us about that which has been invented in the religion. And that which has been invented in the religion is a bid'ah, is an innovation, and all innovations will lead to the hellfire. May Allah protect us from that. The sunnah of, the, of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
It is just like that within the Quran. We find people today who will tell us, where is the evidence from the Quran? We say the Prophet wasallam. he said this. They say, no, we want an ayah, a verse from the Quran. Subhanallah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu an, he said, when he mentioned the famous hadith in Bukhari about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed certain people who do certain things from tattoos, the women who trim their eyebrows, <coughs> etc. He mentioned in the hadith, a woman said to him, I do not find what you're saying in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he's not a, a normal Sahabi. He is one of the most knowledgeable Sahaba in the tafsir, the understanding of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, Verily, if you have read the Quran, then you have found what I'm saying. She said, I have read it from cover to cover, and I have never seen what you're saying. He said, You do not see the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُوذُهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنُهُ فَانْتَهُ That which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given you, then you must take it. And that which he has forbidden you upon, then you must leave it. So anything that comes to the Quran, the Quran, it's equal to that which comes in the Sunnah. Some of the scholars of Islam mentioned that following the athar of the Sahaba, the statements and actions of the Sahaba, there is no path easier and closer to reaching Jannah than following the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. There's so much to talk about of how to stay firm on this Sirat al-Mustaqim. It would take khutbas and lectures to finish it. And we don't have time for that today. And what's meant by the khutbah and Jummah is just to remind one another so we can hold firm to this inshallah. But I do want to mention four key points when it comes to holding on to the Sirat al-Mustaqim. The first of these points is that you are not a true believer until you return to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that which you differ and everything and every aspect of your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجَ مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, He swears by Himself, by your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. He swears by Himself and He says that none of them truly believe until they return to you. And pay attention, in the verse there's three conditions to be a true believer. The first is that you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You return to Allah and that which you differ. Now if somebody comes to you and I say, Ya khi, this is haram. We differ. You say, no, it's not haram. Where do we go back to? We go back to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his sunnah. We go back to the Quran. So if we don't do that, we are not true believers. And then we don't find inside of our hearts haraj. We don't find any discomfort. When we find the ruling that the Prophet sallallahu has passed in his sunnah, that he has given, we don't find anything in our hearts against it. وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا That they submit a full submission to the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger. The second point that we need to always focus on when we're trying to hold firm to the Sirat al-Mustaqim is that in the affairs of the believer, it's not up to us what we do and what we choose. Allah made this very clear in the Quran when He said, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Allah said in the Quran that it's not up to a believing man, a believing male or a believing female, a mu'min or mu'mina. And pay attention to this, because it would have been sufficient for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala to say for a believer, because it would have represented the Muslim men and Muslim women. Because of the importance of this topic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the male and the female. And this is a, a sign when you study it in the knowledge of tafsir to pay attention of the importance of the ayah, the verse that's about to come. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa pass a ruling in an affair, it's not up to you to say, no, I, I like this, I don't like it. I want to take it, I don't want to take it. I'll take some of it and leave some of it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that it's not up to them to have the, the, their opinion in the matter. They have to follow it. And then at the end of the, uh, the verse, وَمَن يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالَ مُبِينًا For those who choose not to follow him, not to follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that whoever disobeys them, that they have gone astray. Not just any dalal, dalal mubina, 
a, a, a type of astringence that is very, very clear. May Allah protect us from that. The third thing we need to remind ourselves of when we're holding firm to the Sirat al Mustaqim and we're traveling down this path to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala, is that we always remind ourselves of the danger of leaving this path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَن يُشَاقِقَ الرَّسُولَ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا Subhanallah. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever rejects or, or turns away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger came from the huda, from the clear guidance, after it's been made clear to him, and he follows other than the path of the believers. And we're talking about the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. So this person has chosen to follow other than the path of the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will leave him to himself. And he will make for his abode the hellfire. May Allah protect us from that. And the last point I want to point out when we're holding firm to the Sirat al-Mustaqeem and we're traveling down this path is that we look at the ayat, the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought in the Qur'an. When he reminds us of what will happen on the Day of Judgment when we stand in front of him and we're held accountable for all of our deeds. It is a reminder to us that this dunya is our only time to prepare. And I want to point out some verses in Surah Al-Furqan as an example. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمِ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ The day the oppressor, the person who has impressed himself with doing bad deeds, not doing what he's supposed to, not being a good Muslim, not following قَالَ اللَّهُ قَالَ رَسُولُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ Not following what Allah told him to do and what his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam told him to do. This person will be biting on his hands out of regret because he realized now the chance he had in the dunya, he blew it. He didn't take advantage of this opportunity. What will this person be saying? He'll be saying, Ya laytani takhattu ma'a rasooli sabila. Ya waylata, laytani lam attakhid fulanan khalila. Laqad adallani ana al-dhikri ba'da ja'ani wa kana shaytanu lil-insani khudula. This person will say, I wish I took with the Messenger وسلم, a path, that he followed the path of the Messenger وسلم, in this dunya when he had the chance. He will say, woe unto me. I wish I didn't take so-and-so as a friend. Because this person, what did he do to you? Why do you wish you didn't take him as a friend? He said, لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنَ الذِّكْرِ إِذْ جَأَنِي He made me turn away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after it came to me clearly. And then he, he mentioned at the end of the, the, the last verse, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that a shaytan, he is khudul to the, to the, he is khudul to us, meaning he is the deserter of mankind. He calls us to his path and he makes it look so beautiful and so easy. But then he will desert us on this, on this day. Wallahu musta'an. This verse, it shows us, in verses like this in the Quran, the danger of not taking the opportunity of life to benefit in that which helps us, in, in following the Sirat al Mustaqim, and going down the Sirat al Mustaqim. Also, in this verse, we see the danger of befriending those who harm us in our deen. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, ittaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. O you who believe, fear Allah and be with the truthful. So the true believer must be with the mu'mins, those who help him in his deen and help him strive on the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Because the believer by himself is weak, but with his brothers, inshallah, he will be strong. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah wa naf'ani wa yakum bima fihima min al-ayati wa al-hikm aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى. A quick reminder in the second khutbah that alhamdulillah we are just a few days or 11 days about inshallah until we reach Ramadan. This is a reminder for all of our brothers and sisters who have not finished their fasting from last year due to sickness or traveling or what have you that they must make sure they finish it before the time is up and they will be have to also have a, the penalty of paying uh, of paying for or feeding a, a, a poor person 
So they need to focus in these days on getting their fasting out of the way if they still have fasting from last year. And also, we need to become excited during these days. Because inshallah, if we reach Ramadan and we're still alive when Ramadan comes inshallah, this is one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our Salaf, Rahimahullah, they used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala six months that they would reach Ramadan. And then after Ramadan, they would make dua for another six months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept from them their actions and their deeds during Ramadan. And when we enter Ramadan, we are not just entering something of routine. We're actually entering a school. And this is why last year when I was asked to give lectures during Ramadan, one of the things I gave a lecture about was a lecture entitled The School of Ramadan. The School of Ramadan because you enter this school. It's a school of tarbiyah. It's educating you. One of the main things we gain from Ramadan is a taqwa. We return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just an example. In the lecture I gave over 40 examples of what we gain from the school of Ramadan. The taqwa. We gain the taqwa. We renew our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We renew our ibadah, our qiyam layl, all of these things. This is what we need to focus on. Get excited about Ramadan and pr get prepared for Ramadan. Read the books you need to know about Ramadan. And I always advise my brothers and sisters before Ramadan to make a list, to write it down. To write it down, what do you want to accomplish in this Ramadan? What do you want to read from the Quran? How many times do you want to complete the recitation of the Quran? How many times do you want to listen to the Quran? What do you want to do? What books do you want to read during Ramadan? How many volumes of Tafsir Ibn Kathir do you hope to finish in Ramadan? What books of Sira do you want to read during Ramadan? All these are just examples. Write them down. Every person has his own goals. Write them down so you can strive inshallah for them during Ramadan. This is just a quick reminder and hopefully next week inshallah there will be more. ثم اعلموا رحمه الله وياكم أن الله قد أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه ثم ثنى بملائكة الكرام فقال عز وجل إن الله, إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما And our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said من صلى علي بواحدة صلى الله عليها بعشرة اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك وعنم على نبينا محمد ورضى اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وان سائر الصحابة أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين وسائر الطغاة والمفسدين يا قوي يا متين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها وقيم الصلاة يحمكم الله